Just wait for that one to load up. Yeah, the way that um, Repo did the manual is really good. They they made he made the manual, then printed it out, then aged it, and then scanned it back in again. So it looks like an old man, an old book, which is really cool. Right, I'm just finding the relevant section in the manual. Right, so we have got one loco and it's cold and dark and we need to uh, set it up so let's just update the text here and that is the uh, right so this is the southern pacific version of the GP20 um, so what have we got to do so electrical control cabinet so if you switch to if you press the left arrow key and move up here if we then turn around and open the handle and then open the door we then we need to uh, operate the knife switch and then these three and then we can close the door and if you don't lock the door it will flap around believe it because it's true right so that's done everything we need to do with that now we need to turn the other way around my track IR is not quite behaving the way we want it to right turn the fuel pump on and we also need to turn these on so the fuel pumps working so we see the fuel pressures coming up we need to turn that into the start position put the heater on and get the engine temperature up engine heat on get the fans running so now we've got things going. We do need to be a little bit careful with all of this stuff is the battery level. So if I just adjust where I'm looking to there. So you can see the battery level here. If that battery runs out then that's it. And the fact that we can see this is in the discharge means that we're actually uh, using battery up at the moment. So I'm warming the uh, engine up. The fuel is all, is all there. just waiting for that to uh, sort out. We've only got a single loco. If you had two locos then you'd move this switch over to say the, the two position but we've only got one so we're going to switch it to one. So we need to make sure the, rever the throttle is in idle, reverser is in neutral So we need over 10 psi fuel pressure, that's good. Right, now we need to hold the engine start button. There it comes, you can see the RPM going up on the HUD. Once the engine's stabilised, we can move this and back it. Now, now it's generating power, you can see. We see the battery almost went down into the orange because we took so long. Now if I switch the, uh, the thing to run, um, we're in a good place. Right. So, and now that it's on, you'll see the engine actually warms up quite nicely. Now if you run this loco in cold weather, you'll need to get that engine warmed up before you can even start it so that's one thing to bear in mind so always get the heater and the engine heat going hey, sorry the engine heat heater is a demister for the front window so as you run it in really cold weather you'll actually find that the windows uh, mist up and you'll need to turn this on to demist them again it's very clever right so to move the loco now we've got it all set up let's get back in the engineer's seat uh, we've got some uh, stuff here, so we've got the gauges light, we've got the uh, speedometer light above us, um, selection main handle light, so that turns those ones on. That's for auto unloading, which we're not using, not using auto sander, so other than that we're all good. Let's get some lights on, so we've got the lights on in front of us. So we're currently, the selector is set to the, uh, that's it, selector is now set to 1, which is what it should be. Um, with the reverser, just that one, 
and then uh, open the release the brakes. So you can see the brakes are coming off now by those gauges. What I will do is just check the uh, the road in front of us, make sure we're not going to uh, run into problems here. So what we're actually clear, let's just do the start of this scenario. So we need to pull forward and come back to couple to those wagons. So let's go ahead and do that. Brakes are off. And there off we go. This is a really fabulous loco, it really is. It's even got the rain on the outside. But <laughs> Class lights are working. Once you've actually got it all started up, it's basically the same as any other loco. What you can find, however, is that you can overheat the engine. Um, so once, uh, so the uh, the heater over here, we just uh, so that you've got the engine heat here. If this gets too hot, which you can get by staying in notch eight for too long, the engine will cut out, and then you'll need to stop the the, uh, the loco and. Uh, reapply the and re the startup procedure once it's cooled down. So that is worth bearing in mind if you're running anything. Uh, let's pull back and get those wagons. I'm not going to do the whole of this scenario. I just wanted to show you the startup sequence. Once you've done the startup sequence it drives just about like any other loco. Uh, BAM 2135, I must admit, I don't know what the, uh, um, whether the, uh, this loco is on sale. Uh, go and have a look and find out, let us know. If you're running in a multi-unit and you've got, say, three GP20s on the front, then you'll need to start all of them. Yeah, it's not just one. Um, uh, it's not just one. It's very loud. Uh, it's not just one that you've got to start. You have to start all of them. So um, yeah, once you've done that, and then what happens is that the uh, this unit selector switch that we operated, this one here, this is one, two, three, four. That controls how many locos you're actually operating when you operate the throttle. Um, so you individually start each one and then if you're driving four locos you set it to four. What you'll notice is that if you've got four locos and you set it to two, then when you throttle up you'll only see the smoke, the diesel smoke, coming out of the first two locos. Which gives you a good idea that uh, something's not quite working efficiently. You can put five locos on it, Doc, but it uh, will only drive the first four because apparently these only ever run in sequences or in uh, up to quads. Unless they put an extra engineer in to drive the other unit. Go towards the station. So anyway, that is this loco. If I switch the heater off... I mean, it takes a while before anything actually happens, and I don't know whether it's cold enough out there for it to happen. Um, the thing to remember when you're driving it is put the selector into one, which is the top one, and this one. Um, and if you need to restart it, make sure that the throttle's in um, I new idle and the reverse is in neutral. Otherwise, it won't start. 
and this door handle here is move it the door handle like that and then open this now if I move it about halfway and then let's move, let's start moving notice how the door handle moves and then if I put the brakes on you notice how it swings open it's very clever so make sure you uh, lock the door otherwise you might find it flapping about which is never good Anyway, let's move. Just, just move forward. Got a cab light. Let's see if we let's just see if this thing starts uh, misting up for us. Going to Truckee Depot 07, which is over there. So we're going to drop these wagons over there. So we're going to go all the way forward into the platform. Lead miner, yes, I turned off the engine heat. Uh, not the engine heater. I've turned off the heater, which is the demister. But like I said, I don't know if it's cold enough outside. Because the uh, because the game doesn't actually simulate the air temperature, um, Ricardo the uh, Ricardo the author has actually put a some code in to try and guesstimate the air temperature based on time of day, season, and you know some other factors. Um, and I don't know if it's cold enough for it to do, to mist up, but it might be. Right, so we've got the line now into the far siding. Let's go and drop those wagons off. There you go, John. Right, let's bring the wagons into that siding. Van Liru, yes, the Southern Pacific version of GP20 comes with scenarios on Donna Pass. So, let me just exit this and switch to that. Let me do one more with the GP20 so we can just have a look at something else. Um, I guess one thing I should highlight is uh, if you're wondering do you need to do the startup all the time no you don't because the uh, the locos come with um, started and not started versions I'm just going to have a look at this scenario and see whether or not this one gives us something different to see. I'm just going to do the startup sequence again on a different scenario. And hopefully this one will have more than one loco in it. In which case we can see how the unit thing works as well.
Yeah, this one's got a little bit. So, uh, let's go and switch. First of all, get into the cab and start the engine. Right, so, switching the scene back. So, if you remember, it's those three. And... Cab, uh, we can't do cab light yet, because we've got no power. And then we switch around here. Unlock that and open it. Flick that on. Now the cab light works because we put the knife on. And then close that again. So you've got those three to do. I did take a bit more time over this the last time. Um, so um, watch the other. When you watch it again you might get more info. Fuel pump on. Move that to start. And let's get the engine heater going. Now we've got to wait. The fuel pump needs the pressure to be built up. Don't have to worry too much about engine temperature because I don't think it's cold outside particularly. Right, now, units one, that's in start. I love how the lights dim when it draws all the power to start it up. Right, and off she goes. Once you stabilise, that's it, you see the lights come on full brightness, so now we can switch that back to run. And we're also check also check that you're in charge. Uh, because sometimes if you miss if you miss a step you'll find that you're still in a uh, discharge and eventually you run out of power. And it doesn't take very long to run out of power. There's no way to put power back in the battery. So let's get the fans running. Put the platform and number lights on. Sit back down here and get the other lights on in the cab. I think that's all we need. Select to forward. Um, don't want to turn glass lights. Uh, put the headlights on full. Put it in forwards. Right, what did it say we needed to do? Reverse and get a caboose. Where are we? We are there. So we need to uh, go back and stop on the caboose track. Okay. There's only one loco on this one as well. So I can't show you the multi unit startup. Multi unit startup basically is you go into each unit, read and do the startup procedure each time. And then once they're all started up, make sure the lead unit has got the right number selected uh, in the unit uh, selector. So that's uh, if we get back up, left arrow, then we'll come back here. And this one here. So if you're running with two locos, make sure you switch it. If you're running with four, switch it to four. Uh, that way it will uh, it will tell it to command to send power to each of the four locos or however many you've got. Right. So that's basically what we wanted to cover with the uh, the GP20. Like I said, once you've got the thing started, it basically runs like any other loco. Um, the engine heat will warm it up. If you run it in a cold uh, time, you need to a uh, cold day, then you'll need to run the engine heater to get it start before it'll even start. Um, and the heater switch is a demister for the front windows. So if you run it in a very cold time, snowing in the winter in the two o'clock in the morning, then you'll see the windows actually fog up so you can't see outside them. It's very clever. Um, and then the demister will then defog them for you. Um, so that's what those options are for. Right. So changing route time. Um, or is it changing route time? Maybe we should do something else, actually. Well, what, what do you want to do, folks? I think... I think that it might...